Christmas, why don't you turn to the person next to you and go, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I loved how much that sounded like exactly how I said it. I appreciate that so much. Welcome everyone to those of you that aren't regulars or this is your first time coming along. You are so welcome here. We're so glad you're here. For those that come here regularly, Merry Christmas. Love you guys. And um, well, love all of you anyway. But today it is Christmas and I would like to start with you all standing up for me. Now, we're now going to see who woke up the earliest. Whoever's got young children, I think you've got that in the bag. So who woke up? So sit down if you woke up at 9 a.m. or later. Sit down. No one. Yo. Oh. If you were 8 a.m. or later, sit down. Okay, a good number there. More the kind of like, you know, teenagers, young adults, you know. Okay. Yeah, there are other teenagers. It's not just you, Abby. Right, 7 a.m. or later. Anyone get up at 7 or later? Oh, do you know what? <laughs> do you know what's quite funny? They're not parents. <laughs> Why were you awake? What is wrong with you? <laughs> okay, si did I say six or seven? Six a.m. or later? Right, okay. Oh my goodness, 5 a.m.? <laughs> goodness that are you okay do you need some prayer some laying of hands are you all right <laughs> yeah just have a lie down it's all good there's a row of chairs there <laughs> 3 a.m oh my goodness anyway we are here today um and wait are you were you still awake at 3 a.m 2 a.m did she wake you up Vix? oh hallelujah thank goodness for that why were you awake at 2 a.m Oh my goodness, well, okay, right. Well, on that note, I think we should pray. <laughs> so Father God, um, Lord, we thank you that this today is bigger than presents. It's bigger than waking up early, God. This is about you. This is about the birth of the baby Jesus Christ who brought us salvation and brought us hope. So Lord, we thank you for this morning, God. Thank you for every single person that you've brought in through these doors, Lord. I pray that we will know your presence today, God, that it will be a powerful morning filled with you, Lord, and we just want to glorify and worship you. Thank Thank you that you are so good and you are the greatest gift we could ever get God you are the greatest thing we could ever receive so thank you amen, amen. let's sing some carols
a way where there might not seem a way Lord and I want to lift up to you those that find Christmas a really hard time of year God I want to pray for those who are grieving I want to pray for those who suffer loss this Christmas Lord that may you will comfort them may you strengthen them may you be with them God may you encounter them right now in your power and your strength and Lord we thank you that you are here we thank you that you are the way maker you are the promise keeper you are the light of the world Father God and you are so good thank you amen now, if you want to grab a seat, comes the, the, the one of my favorite times of a Christmas morning, which is what presents did you get? Who's opened their presents already? Who hasn't? Me. If you have a present with you, adult, child, I don't really care what age you are, and you want to show off your gift and give thanks to God and your parents and whoever else bought them for you, come on stage and we're going to do a bit of a present presentation. Come on up. I'll move this out of the way. Come on. Adults can come up too. I know you've got some stuff that you want to show off for adults. Feel free to come up. Yeah. Ooh. Any more? Oh, yeah. Come on, Lucas. No, he's, he's not. He's not having it. <laughs> cool. So, what did you ask for Christmas first? I asked for a microphone. You asked for a microphone. And what did you get? A microphone. Whoa. <laughs> that is good gift giving. Well done. Do you want to show it off? What is it? It's a red microphone. What, what is it? Like a karaoke? Do you just like preach to your household? What, what's it for? I just sing into it. Singing in it. Is she a good singer, mum? She is good. That's good. Good news. Good news. What, and what is this? I don't know what it's called, but it's really fun. There you go. Cool. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's really fun. We love that. Is it really squishy? Yes. <laughs> That's really weird. Okay, Tabitha, what did you get? Wait, what did you ask for Christmas? Shacket. And what did you get for Christmas? Shacket. Woohoo! She got a shacket. <laughs> this is going well so far. And for Christmas. And what is that? I don't know. It's a little Rudolph. Look. Ty toy. It's a ty toy. A ty toy. Do you want to show it off? Should we present our presents in a fashionable manner? Ooh. Right, thank you. Thaddeus. Can I guess what you got for Christmas? What did you get for Christmas, Thaddeus? I got a buzz. He got a buzz. Do you want to lift it up for everyone to see? I love the round of applause these are getting. Way, look at that buzz light here. Yeah. That is actually cool. Does his helmet go on? Does he have... Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't expect that. That made me jump. So it like, it, yeah. Have you seen the Lightyear film? Is it good? 
Yeah, he's a fan. That's awesome. Well done, Thads. Right, what did you get for Christmas? Oh, wait, wait. What did you ask for Christmas? Books. I did get books, but I didn't have them with me. Okay, what books did you get? Um, Charlie Bones series. Ooh, I've not heard of that. Is that good? I don't know. Is it good? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Good. So far, good. So what did you bring that you want to show, show the crowd? <laughs> Ooh, do you want to lift it up? It's so shiny. That really suits you as well. Does it? Is it? Is it? Does it feel good on your head? Do you feel really like cool? I just like it. You just like it. That's great. I love it. That's fabulous. Right. What did you ask for Christmas? Um, I asked for a set of drums, and I've got a set of drums. Woo! So, does that mean in the future you will be where Mark is sat? No. No. <laughs> I think you should aim for that. I think you should aim to be like the youngest drummer in WBC. I think that should be the goal. Wouldn't that be cool? Yes. Let's go. And did you also get this? Yes. And what is this? It's a handbag. Is it designer? I don't really know. Okay. <laughs> we love it. Do you want to show it off? Look at that. Woo! It's so shiny. Abby, what did you ask for Christmas? A toy. And what did you get for Christmas? A toy. Oh! Do you want to show everyone your toy? It's such a cute little penguin with a little hat on. That's nice. Awesome. Right, should we sh shuffle down? Come on, children. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. There we go. That's it. Right. Good morning. What is your name? Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Good to meet you. What did you ask for Christmas? For some Lego Speed Champions. And what did you get? Lego Speed Champions. Do you know what? Parents are nailing it this year, aren't they? Do you want to show it off to people? So what exactly is it? Is it um, it's a Kungazeg Jesco um, car, yeah. A car. <laughs> Anch I love you love anchovies. So you literally got given... I th mm. Would you call that a gift? Not in my books. Okay, well, I'm glad you like anchovies. I personally do not, but enjoy. Right, darling, what did you get? Thor hammer. Thor hammer! Do you want to hold it up? Woo! Can, can you fly like Thor, though? That's the question. Yes. Do you want to show us? Yes. Yes. Right, do you want to show us? Fly! Are we a bit shy? Not, not, to, not the time. Yeah, she obviously doesn't want to destroy the church with the might of Molnir. So that's fabulous, though. I love that. Right, darling, what did you get? Um. <gasps> no, are you joking? Tamagotchi. She got a Tamagotchi. Does anyone else remember Tamagotchis? Oh my, are you actually joking? That is such a throwback. <laughs> did, you, did you want a Tamagotchi? Yeah. How did you find it? Where did you get it? I need to know. Right, send me the link. Because your girl wants a Tamagotchi. That is actually the coolest thing ever. Because <gasps> they like, anyway, I'm too excited about the Tamagotchi. I'm going to move on. <laughs> right, do we want to shuffle over again? Shuffle. Right. Miriam, what did you get for Christmas? Well, two years ago, on Christmas Eve, I got a Lucas. Oh, And isn't he gorgeous? And what did you get for Christmas? You go, rawr, dinosaurs. He did get dinosaurs. He got dinosaurs. Oh. The question is, Lucas, can you name the dinosaurs and what type they are? Oh, he wants to give you one. Oh, that. oh thank you. Oh. Right, can I name them? T T Rex? I don't know what they are actually. <laughs> I, I do. Thads! Thads! What are these? Are they T Rexes? Yeah, see, I was right. I do know my dinosaurs. Right, do you want these back, darling? Oh no, you're going to give me another one. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Right, good morning. Oh, oh gosh, I need tripped on my skirt. Hi, what's your name? What's your name? Hi. Simon. Hi, Simon. What did you get for Christmas? Yeah. You got those glasses, did you? Do you want to show everyone your glasses? Whoa! Aren't those amazing? Oh, they're fantastic, Simon. They suit you. I feel like they really flatter your complexions. Absolute vibe. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, everyone. And make sure to say a big thank you to your parents and your grandparents and go give them a hug. Good job. Great. <laughs> 
So before we move on to um, the next um, song, I just want to remind us of a parable that there is in the book of Matthew, where obviously everyone has received gifts, or I hope everyone's received gifts or are going to receive gifts. But we know that the greatest gift of all is the kingdom of heaven. So in the parable of the hidden treasure and the pearl, it says the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had bought um, and bought it. So Lord, we thank you that you are the greatest gift we could ever receive this Christmas. God, we thank you um, that you are so good that you have provided for us, Lord. I thank you for all the presents people have received, God. And we thank you for parents who put a lot of time and effort into them, Lord, and grandparents as well, and carers and guardians. God, we thank you for them. And yeah, Lord, we just praise your name today. Amen.
Lord, I just pray that today we can receive your grace, Lord, that is freely given to us, Lord, your gift of salvation that is freely given, Lord. You don't expect anything back, um, Lord. You don't expect us to, to be perfect, Lord. You just welcome us in with open arms. And Lord, I just want to pray for Mark now as he comes up to share, God. I just pray that his words will be your words, that he will be filled with your spirit, God, and just share exactly what you want to say to us this morning. And Lord, give us ears to hear and hearts to receive. Amen. Hey, if you'd like to take your seats. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, I'd just like you to put your hand up if you have a Christmas tree in your house. Who has a Christmas tree in their house? No judgment if you don't. That's okay. Some Christmas trees are big. Some are small. They all count, even these little tiny ones that we have scattered here. Or if you've got one the size of the one we've got at the back, then well done to you. Okay, who was involved? Who helped in the decorating of their tree? Anybody helped in the decorating? I don't know why I'm putting my hand up. I didn't help in the decorating my tree. <laughs> actually, actually that's, that's a more pertinent question as well. Who is not qualified to help in the decorating of a Christmas tree or is not allowed anywhere near? I'm glad there's some in that club as well. Very good. Who, who supervised the decorating of the tree? Oh, no. Okay, there's some supervisors around in this room. Actually, I think, I think the decorating of our tree in here was supervised by Tash, wasn't it? Tash, you supervised the decorating. We should give her a round of applause. If you want someone to supervise decorating and to get it just right, Tash is, Tash is the person to consult. Um, now then, I, I want to know actually, what's your, what's your favourite decoration on a Christmas tree? Just shout out your favourite things. Tinsel. Tinsel, yeah? Star. star. Oh, the star's great, isn't it? Yeah. Lights. Oh, amazing. Like chocolate. Nice oh, chocolate. What's that? Your kiwi. Wow, is that a New Zealand reference? Okay, wonderful. Lots of things there. Some people said lights, right? And I, and I, I quite, I, I like lights on the tree. And, um, and, and actually, if you said lights and, or, or any of the decorations, if you like Christmas tree decorations, you're in good company. Because actually, do you know, I, I didn't know this before. I'm sure many of you have probably known this a lot longer than me. But the person who thought, who had the idea, who came up with the idea of a Christmas tree was actually a man named Martin Luther. Now, some of you kids won't necessarily know who that is. Some of you adults won't know who that is. That's okay. But he was a very important leader in the church 500 years ago. And the story goes like this. It says, one December, okay, so it's cold, it's dark, it's wintry. And Martin Luther was out on a walk and he was writing that Sunday's sermon. He had it in his mind. He was mulling it over. And he was struck by all the beauty of the stars. If you look up, you can see like our fairy lights twinkling here. They're not quite as beautiful as the actual stars, are they? But it gives you an, an idea. And so he, he cut down a tree, which sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? And he took it inside his home and then he decorated it. And, and he put candles all over it to teach his children about the meaning of Advent and about light shining in the darkness. Now, I just want to say here, disclaimer, we don't recommend putting candles on your Christmas tree at home. Thankfully, we don't do that nowadays. I, um, I did read, actually, as I was looking up about Christmas trees, some interesting and, and sometimes tragic incidents that happened as a result of candles on Christmas trees. It kind of makes our Chris Dingle look pretty tame, doesn't it? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you thought Chris Dingle was dangerous, you need to hang out with some 16th century German Christians because they really knew how to set things on fire. But there's a, there's a logic to celebrating Christmas on the 25th of December. Because you might think, well, you know, Jesus probably wasn't actually born on the 25th of December. He's a bit like actually our, our monarch in that respect. He has like an official, official birthday and then an actual birthday. Um, but this is his official birthday. And, um, and there's a bit of a logic to the Christmas tree as well. And, and, it's, and the fact is this, I think, you know, this time, it's just about pretty much the darkest moment in the year, isn't it? You know, if we didn't have Christmas to look forward to, actually, it would, be, it would be pretty miserable. It's pretty hard for a lot of people sometimes this time of year. And it's the time when the nights are at their longest and, um, and, the, and the, the, the days are, are their darkest. And, um, you know, it's cold and the trees are bare. And, and this darkness reminds us of a world that is longing for Jesus and needs the light of Jesus to shine in and to break in. You know, that's, that's the point. And, and also of our longing for Jesus to come again in his glory and to fill the earth with his light. Isaiah um, chapter 9 verse 2 says this. says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, 
a light has dawned. And it's at the darkest point, it's at the darkest moment that Christmas comes. And, and it's into the darkest place that Jesus comes to shine his light. And, and we have this reminder, don't we, that even in our very darkest moments, no matter how dark it might get, You know, sometimes actually at the darkest point, that can be the moment when we encounter Jesus and his light shines most powerfully. John 1 tells us this. Uh, John says in in chapter 1 of his gospel, he says, The light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not overcome it. It hasn't. And I want us to think very briefly, okay, about, about light and, um, and what it can tell us about Jesus. So I've got, um, I've got a box here, okay. I need actually a volunteer just to come up just briefly, just to check something out here. Oh, yeah, come on then. Let's get one of, one of you guys. Manima, select one of your children. Uh, I don't want to be responsible for the fallout. <laughs> just send one of them, send one of them up here. <laughs> yeah, send the little one. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come, 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 come quick. I need, I, need, I need some help here. Come on, you can do this. You can do this. You got it. Manima, come too. Yeah, this is great. Excellent. Good, good stuff. Okay, I have a box, right? I want you to tell, tell me what you think's in the box. Don't open the box, okay? Just, just what, do you, what do you think's inside? Hold it. Hold it. Yeah? Give it a shake. What do you think's in there? A teddy? No, it's not a teddy. It's a bit light to be a teddy. What do you reckon? Do you think? What do you think? What do you think, Shona? Do you think wool? Wool. Do you know what? I'll tell you. There's nothing in the box. There's nothing in it. There's nothing in it. But, but I want you to look inside, okay? Because actually, there is something inside this box. I inside this box there is darkness, okay? I think I think it's dark. Do you think it's dark inside this box? Yeah. You don't. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not trying to trick you. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, we can't, I can't tell you for certain it's dark in this box because you know that thing with the fridge and the light in the fridge, you know? And you never know for certain whether the light really does go off when you shut the fridge door because you can't quite see it unless you climb inside the fridge. So I think it's dark inside of here. Um, but I, I'm a bit worried that if I open this box, the darkness that's inside this box it could just make everything else dark, couldn't it? All the lights might go off because it might just overflow and spill out. Do you think that would, do you think that would happen? No, no. What do you think? What do you think would happen? You open it. <gasps> it's not dark in there. It's not dark, is it? And, 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 that's, and that's because the, the light is more powerful than the darkness. The darkness cannot come out of this box and make everything else dark. It has no power to do that, does it? What do you think? No? There's no Teddy, I'm afraid. No Teddy this time. But uh, anyway, thank you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, when we think about darkness and light, we've always got to remember that the light is, is infinitely more powerful than the darkness. You know, so when John says that the light shines in the darkness, the darkness has not overcome it. You know, darkness cannot, can't, can't overcome light. The, the, the darkness inside this box couldn't just kind of scurry away and hide in the corner. As soon as the light comes... It's, it's destroyed. It's obliterated. And this tells us something about Jesus and who Jesus is. Because Jesus comes to defeat all the forces of darkness. He comes to defeat sin and death and evil in this world. And he comes to deal with it once and for all. And when Jesus comes in, the darkness has, has no place to, to run, no place to hide. You know, the darkness, the darkness is gone. It is, it's, it's vanquished, it's obliterated in a moment because of the light of Jesus. And secondly, light guides us. Okay, so, um, so I want to just tell you a little story. I don't think I've told this before. I had a, I had a friend who lived in a, um, lived in a house that was the other side of a field. And you had to walk from the station to get to my friend's house. And one time I was trying to walk home from my friend's house in the dark. And when I say the dark, I mean, it was really dark. So, you know, when in Isaiah it talks about the thick darkness, this night I could not see anything at all. I couldn't see kind of like my hand in front of my face. I don't know what was going on. The, the clouds must have been so thick. Couldn't see a thing. But I thought, that's okay, because I know the way across this field. I've walked it many, many, many times. So I'll just go. And this, this was... 
You can tell this was in a dark time because it was before the era, I think, of smartphones. Okay, that's, that's, the, that's the kind of darkness. I'm, maybe the first iPhone had come out, but I certainly didn't have one of those. Um, so it was before that, so I couldn't switch the torch on on my phone. I had no light at all, so I just set off across. And, and as I went, I was, I was getting more and more uh, kind of... Um, yeah, I got this feeling that maybe I wasn't quite going in the right direction. Let's put it that way. And I ended up by a fence in completely the wrong corner of this field. I was, just, I was in completely the wrong place. I had to sort of track my way back, and I found my way eventually. But, but light guides us. It guides our path. And, and without Jesus... And before Jesus, it's like we're stumbling around in the dark, trying to find our way. We might think we know where we're going, but, but without him, really we're lost. And we're, we're going to end up in the wrong destination. But, you know, with Jesus, he guides our way. He lights our path through life. You know, the Bible says his, his word is a lamp to our feet. Jesus also is a light to us. And he, and he shines and he shows us the way and he leads us by his spirit. So Jesus is like a light that guides us. And thirdly, light reveals things. So if you, if you want to see something clearly, you need lots of light. You know, if you want to, if you want to find something, you need like a, a torch. If I wanted to find something under this stage, I need to shine a light under to see what's going on under there and, and to find things. And, you know, the light of Jesus, yes, it reveals our, reveals our sin, you know, in a way that sometimes is uncomfortable. You know, coming... You know, meeting with Jesus can, can sometimes be an uncomfortable thing. It can, it can show where we fall short in our lives. Um, but also, this light reveals beauty as well. You know, beauty in the world. It's like when we see everything, you know, with the light of Jesus. A bit like when I, when I went on holiday um, when I was younger, we used to go to St. Ives and you'd always get those postcards that would say St. Ives by night. And it would just be black. <laughs> okay? <laughs> And, uh, you know, and, and I, th- I think there's, um, there's somebody making a good, good amount of money producing those cards. You don't even have to pay royalties to photographers. But anyway, um, but when you see things in the light of day, you can see the beauty of a place. And it's like that with Jesus, actually. In his light, the whole world looks different. You see everything differently. You see things as they really are. You see people as they really are and, and who they're created to be. And, and so it's not just... We don't just see sin and darkness, we see beauty as well around us and we see the beauty in the world that God has created in a new way. Just a couple more little ones. I don't know if you know, light cleans things. Does anyone know that? UV light, you can clean stuff with UV light. I'm no scientist. Some of you guys will know this far better than me. Barry's quite good at science. He can probably explain how this works afterwards. Ask Barry. But a UV light... (laughs) It can clean, it can kill bacteria and viruses and, and things like that. And, and in the same way, the light of Jesus, you know, it's like, it's like his light. It, Jesus came to cleanse us from sin. He came to, he came to make, us, make us new. And, um, and that's an amazing thing. And light also heals, you know, infrared light. Oh, I'm losing some people now, so I'll, I'll not go on the sciencey things. I see some blank faces. Infrared light, apparently it's got healing properties. I don't know if that's a con or if that's true. You have to look it up online. I'm hearing some truths there. Um, Jesus brings healing. But I, finally, this is the one I really want us to focus on. This is the overarching one. Jesus, um, you know, John actually says in the beginning of his gospel, he says about Jesus, he says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And, do you know, without light... Nothing can live, okay? Nothing can live. You know, if the sun was out of the sky tomorrow, then nothing would, nothing would survive. Um, we need light. Light brings energy um, and, 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 and gives heat and all of these things that we need to live. And, um, and in the same way, Jesus brings life. He's come that we might have life and life in all of its fullness. And if you want to discover real life, and you want to discover life like you've never known it before and the life you were created to live, you need Jesus and you need his light to shine into your life. Uh, 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 he has defeated the darkness. He's come to defeat the power of sin and death. He's come, to, um, he's come to break the hold of anything that might be holding you back in your life. He will guide you. He will lead you. You know, things will be challenging, but he will, he will lead you forwards. And he is the only one who knows 
the end from the beginning and can take you to the right destination and can take you to be with God. He helps you to see things as they truly are with clarity and, um, and, and as God has made them to be. And, and he will cleanse you from sin. He will heal you. And he offers you life in all its fullness. And, and the Gospels and the Christmas story is about how this light has dawned. This light has broken into this world in Jesus Christ. And this is good news. Jesus was born to us. Unto us a child is born. Um, but, but also he grew and he, he took on evil powers on the cross. He rose again victorious. And he is with us today. And I want to encourage you um, to receive this light to receive this life uh, this Christmas. And may you know the light of Jesus shining in your life, in your families, in your homes, um, throughout this day and forevermore. So let me pray for us. And, um, and then we'll, I think we're going to be singing our final song. So, yeah. Yeah, Lord Jesus, we thank you that light has come. We thank you that the glory of the Lord has shone into this world through you, Jesus. And, um, and that glory is still shining and that light is still shining. You shine through your people. Um, you shine into our hearts through the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, today I pray that you would bless each and every one, uh, each and every person here, each and every person watching online, every single person in our community, that they might know your light breaking into their lives through Jesus Christ and the life that you bring. Um, which is so much more than we could ever ask for or imagine, so much more than we ever expected or dreamed of. Um, Lord, we praise you this morning. We thank you that you came to be with us. And um, we thank you that you came to bring us to the Father. And, um, and Lord, we glorify you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. once a year.
for joining us this joyful morning and just a couple of things to keep in mind we have our new year's day you can sit down if you want to just everyone's looking at me a bit like can i um we have our new year's day service at 4 p.m hallelujah it's not at half 10 in the morning so make sure to come along to that if you're free and i don't know if you've noticed but there have been some things hidden around the church and around ashford as well maybe jesus rocks if you find one you can keep it and there are five golden ones around as well so if you find one you can keep one of those as well Woohoo! Woo so i hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day oh look there's one there it's not focusing though is it you tried you failed it's okay don't worry <laughs> jesus still loves you <laughs> You. okay that's fine so yes let me just pray over you as you go out so father god i pray for the the most incredible christmas roast this afternoon for every single person here or whatever they're eating god whether it's kfc or whatever may it be amazing lord i pray that people will have a blessed time with family and friends and if they're here god i pray for the meal that is happening here lord i pray that you will be present lord we thank you for your peace we thank you for your love we thank you for your grace and lord i pray today everyone will just be filled with that joy that comes from your spirit god not from receiving gifts not from having lots of food in our tummies god but from your spirit god so we just pray that joy over everything every single person here father god that peace over every single person here lord and may you bless them as they go amen